All right, what's going on, everybody? So this is my impressions for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Um, I actually almost forgot to do an impressions video because I've just been enjoying the game so much. And, you know, a couple people on Twitter just, you know, asked me, am I doing an impressions video? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot to do that. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know, and if you've been watching me for a while, you should know, um, these Souls-type games, even though this is less of a Souls games as, you know, the previous so uh, From Software titles, I'm still going to call it a Souls game to make it easier, um, are like probably my second favorite genre um, right next to third person shooters, right? I love these boss rush uh, Souls type games. I, I just love them, right? And I've, you know, I've beaten all the previous ones. I've beaten Neo, beat, I've beaten, you know, the Dark Souls series. I even beat Lords of the Fallen. Um, there were a few indie games like uh, Salt and Sanctuary and uh, there was there was a there was another one. So there's many different uh, iterances of these Souls type games. Many many different takes, and I've pretty much beaten all of them, um, pretty much except the Surge because I didn't think the Surge was a very good game just in general. But I might pick up the Surge too if they made uh, better improvements. But you know that's just my love and my my history for these type of games. All right. So first impressions. So this story is much more simple and straightforward versus the stories that were crafted in previous from software titles you know they tended to uh they tend to hide the story and the narrative and the plot in the lore of the game and you kind of got to go look for it and put these and and put together these clues to figure out exactly what's being told typically this is you know pretty much a much more simple concept uh the game takes place in feudal japan and at the end of a battle an orphan is adopted by one of the warriors uh, and many years later, that orphan becomes the servant and bodyguard to the divine heir. He's a full-fledged, you know, sh shinobi now. Um, and he originally, I believe his original name was uh, Seju. Um, that's what his mentor who adopted him named him. Um, but then, I'm not, you know, I'm going to avoid some spoilers, but then he gets the name uh, Sekiro which means one-armed wolf, and I don't think that's a spoiler because you can put together uh, from some of the trailers and some of the gameplay how, why he's call, called the one-armed wolf. So that's pretty much the basis of the story. There's not much I really have to say, um, say much more I need to say on that. So now let's get to the gameplay. Now, typically everybody by now should know how Souls games play, even though this is different. Um, everybody typically knows how it's played. The foundation of a Souls game or a From Software game is still is still there in Sekiro. So I don't want to explain all of those things, but I, I do want to, I guess, talk about more uh, how the game is different. If I had to describe this game, it it's Neo and Tenshu. It's a Neo Tenshu Souls game, right? It's I I wouldn't say it's it it has very you know since it is a From Software title. Yes, it's similar to uh, you know, Bloodborne and the Souls games in some in certain ways and in, in the way that it plays, but it's it's very different from those. It it is more like Neo, and I said and and like I said, some characteristics of, of like a Tenchu game. Um, so some differences that I want I, I want to point out: you can't farm. Well, you can't farm to level up, uh, but you still can farm to collect experience points, and you you can use those experience points. To unlock abilities from the skill tree and you can farm money to buy items when you die uh, you don't lose souls you lose half your experience points and uh, half of the money you have and sometimes you won't lose uh, half of those things depending on a stat called unseen aid uh, it gives you a percentage chance of of uh, pretty much if you won't lose half of your resources and the unseen aid can be affected by dragon rot, which also connects to the ending of the story. So I'm, not, but I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole because that whole uh, dragon rot thing and unseen aid that's a little bit more complex uh, built built into the game, right? So this and this game is a little bit less of an RPG than previous from software titles because they've they've removed the stats and attributes that you typically see in their games. Um, there is, you know, like attack power, but everything else is gone. Defense, luck, uh, 
you do have you know your your you can you can increase your vitality but all those other stats you know there's i think there was usually like i don't know i want to say nine or more of those um statistics that your character had in, in souls games those are gone you don't there that's out of here now it's more of a strategic uh souls action game i would say right and i say strate strategic because this is far from a hack and slash if you play this game like a hack and slash you're gonna die and you're gonna die pretty quickly um so if if i had to you know really describe the combat of uh the the basic elements of of, of the combat in Sekiro, it's stealth attacks deflect dodge jump dodge sword attack prosthetic tools combat art and death blow those are the basic you know elements of combat and those things can be expanded right and also you have you know your your ninja tools which can be configured to uh your character's prosthetic arm and you know the game is designed in much more of a vertical and uh traversal way because you know your arm does also serve as a grappling hook grappling hook as well as a um a, a ways uh, for combat um so and like i said the combat is more similar to neo but it's not as deep as neo anybody who played neo you would know uh neo had like move sets almost as complex as like a fighting game it, it damn near had combos right and many different you know moves you could you could use on enemies sekiro is not does not have that amount is amount of depth in its uh in its unlock tree but it has more than previous souls games and and bloodborne right and i'm gonna get into my opinion on what's you know the better game based on based on what i played because a lot of people are starting to debate that now now what really makes sekiro more complex and my and, and in my opinion better than previous souls games on top of the reason i just mentioned is because you have to respond with certain actions based on the type of enemy and the enemy attack so in previous souls games it essentially just boiled down to dodge 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 block attack depending on the souls game right you didn't really need to you had to know the timing of enemy of enemy moves to know when to dodge and to know when to attack but that's pretty much it it still boiled down to you know dodge 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 block attack right the timing is just one aspect that you got to really focus on in Sekiro right so in Sekiro uh certain circumstances you have to deflect because you can't block or you have to deflect because that will start to break their posture that's a new element in this in this game their posture is pretty much their guard you have to break their guard right and when you get when you break their guard you get the chance to do a death blow some enemies require multiple death blows to be defeated so along with the the uh death blow stock these enemies also have health bars the lower their health is the slower their posture bar uh recovers because if you leave these enemies alone for us for for example if you attack an, an enemy and you get the posture bar to the point where it's, where it's about to break but you back off and don't attack anymore or don't deflect then their posture recovers right so you do have to keep a certain amount of pressure on them but if their health is lower then their posture will recover a, a lot slower so you do have a little chance and time to back off uh and may, maybe retreat and attack at a different angle without worrying about their posture completely resetting if they have full health now then you know you kind of got to attack you got to deflect all of that stuff uh br breaks their their posture so all of that stuff death blows um uh deflects uh their health uh and all of that stuff tie in together so these are all the elements you kind of got to worry about uh in Sekiro and what makes the game I guess harder in some aspects and more complex than in previous games because it's just much more you have to keep account of and worry about and to me that that does in my opinion make the game better this game is kind of like the middle ground it's like the the better balance of offense and defense because you can't be completely defensive 
in this game, and you can't be completely offensive either. So I think they've learned from previous games, okay, this this is the balance right here. Because Bloodborne was on the was on the spectrum that's completely offensive typically. Souls games were kind of like more defensive in, in some ways. Uh, this is like right in the middle in my opinion. Um, the game also has more of a mix of mini bosses and bosses than the previous games like it. There is no stamina in this game, so that's something you don't have to worry about as uh, anymore. And there is the, the option to resurrect in certain cer cer certain circumstances when you die. Um, in the beginning, you can only resurrect once. There, there you do have uh, the chance as you get further in the game uh, to gain the ability to resurrect yourself more than once if you die. Um, I'm playing on PC, by the way, and let me just say, I think. It, it's a mistake to play a game like this on consoles, right? For one, the frame rate isn't stable, uh, as we've seen from several videos. And when it comes to a game like this where every little frame matters, then, yeah, you're going to get screwed over in certain situations. Simply, if, if a frame drops at the wrong time, you're going to die. And... This is a PC version that, you know, has all the bells and whistles that you would expect from software. It doesn't, hasn't had the best track record uh, of, of creating good PC ports um, in the past, but they've obviously learned from that, besides the fact that they locked the frame rate to 60 frames. And, uh, you know, some people say there's a reason why they do that. I don't, I don't know. I wish it wasn't locked. Uh, it, uh, you know, the PC community usually fig figure, figures out a way to unlock it but then it kind of screws up certain parts of the game sometimes. Um, but they overall did a good job with the PC version um, this time around. So yeah, I think playing this game on, on consoles is an absolute mistake and you shouldn't do it. The best experience is the PC version because that 60 frames in games like this where split second decisions are important. So it is best to play this on, on PC. Uh, so yeah, um, I, j I just I'm really enjoying the game. The g the game is fire. I, I I'm really liking it. Uh, it is. If I had to say, yeah, I would say it is harder than Bloodborne or previous uh, Souls type games because of all the things, all the uh, elements in the game that you have to account for, and it's also it has more depth than those games. And to me, it does make it you know. Uh, it does make it better in my opinion there's more complexity there's there's more depth uh, you know you kind of have to reprogram your brain uh, going into it uh, y and you got to learn the different move sets because even the basic elements which I explained those as you as you uh, you know get further in the game and you unlock more abilities those are expanded for example there's one move uh, called the Makiri counter which is specifically to be used on enemies who are doing an unblockable attack, uh, an unblockable thrusting attack specifically. And that's one of the, that's, you know, ties into how this game is more complex because it only works on a, a thrusting attack, right? And it deals, you know, high posture uh, d damage, right? And then there's certain attacks you have to jump over and, and land, land a jumping kick on, on the enemy. And the game kind of makes this very clear to you because there is a pretty much an undying man. I think his name is, is Hanbei or Henbei. There's an undying man and you can practice all of these moves on him um, at, the, at the central hub of the game. And it's very important that you do because a lot of these moves that you unlock through the skill tree, they're, they're not like intuitive. I would say, and for me, it wasn't intuitive. I had to go fight this guy, this undying man, which is pretty much a practice dummy, and you kind of got to learn the situations and the circumstances in which you would want to use this move. Because doing it in a in a in a real life, a uh, real game situation where you could die uh, when you haven't tested it out, it's not naturally going to be your reaction. Right, so that's why it's very important to like you got to train and and practice with these moves you unlock and like reprogram your brain. So yeah, those are my first impressions on the game. The game is, I think the game is great. I'm really loving it. Uh, I've been live streaming it. Check out my Twitch and everything like that. I'm definitely gonna do a review on it when when I finally beat it. Uh, the boss, I will. Last thing I'm gonna say is the boss design is not it is it's it's not the most 
extravagant thing. Uh, the boss design, they're not these like huge towering enemies, these colossuses, you know, like, it's not like that. Uh, they're very uh, humanoid, typically, uh, type enemies. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, those are my first, those are my impressions of the, of the game. Uh, I don't know if I said it, but I, I, I beat like maybe four mini bosses, four main bosses. That's pretty much how far I am. So yeah, those are my impressions, y'all. Let me know what y'all think. I'm out of here. Peace.